at the assembly. Uh, a lot of people asking a lot of questions, and we're going to try to answer some of those tonight. But let's just pray before we get started. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for all that you've done for us. God, we thank you that you have been right on for us. Uh, you just provided and took care of us and in a time when uh, we could easily turn to fear and and be anxious. Uh, you've just kept us in calm and in peace, and uh, we give you praise for that and give you thanks. So tonight we have uh, Pastor TJ with us, Pastor Bethany, uh, Pastor Roger and Clara, and Jerry and Linda, and uh, we are just... Uh, uh, excited about what God is doing in our church, and we've decided to do something new. And uh, I can tell you, just from sitting here with them, everybody's nervous. Uh, Jerry's uh, planned a great escape. He's going <laughs> to fall off the edge of the platform and, and run. And if he does, I'm going with him. And uh, But we're going to have fun with this and uh, just hope to answer some questions that we have. You know, uh, with COVID-19 going on, uh, I've had... A lot of people ask a lot of questions, and uh, one of the first questions, and we'll just go ahead and get started, is um, what does, uh, is COVID-19 the beginning of the end? What does the Word of God tell us about the return of Christ? Uh, Linda, you want to get us started? Um. <laughs> <laughs> What is the first part of the question is what is COVID 19 and it is it the beginning of the end? Oh, uh, I, I think that it's that it's uh, it could be the beginning of the end. I think it's something that uh, is a foretaste of what could happen. Mm -hmm. And of course, the book of Revelation tells us a lot uh, of what is going to happen. So I I definitely think that uh, this virus is definitely a wake-up call and to, to uh, the, the people of the nation and the world that, uh, you know, that uh, the end could come and that uh, it's, it's, it's a shakening. Uh, definitely. It's definitely a shakening and an awakening. Mm -hmm. uh, so he definitely has our attention. Amen. Amen. Roger, Claire. knoweth the hour or time that mm -hmm. God shall come back. So we don't know. But I'm like Linda. I think this is a, a shot over our bow warning us that we need to get our life in order and return back to God. Matthew 16, 4, a wicked adulterous generation seeks after a sign and no shine shall be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. And I just believe that it, it's time it's time that the people wake up and do away with their sinful nature. Um, I guess I just think that um, it's, you know, in the Word it talks about um, wars and rumors of wars, and it talks about pestilences, and um, I think Roger's got written down the different um, plagues and stuff that we've seen throughout history. Um, and so, I don't, you know, the Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. Um, and it says that, you know, um, you know, in Mark 13, 32, it says, no man knows the day or the hour, um, not even the angels in heaven, only um, the Father knows. Um, so, are we closer than we've ever been? For sure. Well, if you read uh, Matthew chapters 24 and 25, it talks a lot about the second coming, and we won't take time to read that, but I encourage you to read Matthew 24 and 25. It just kind of lays it out for you, but uh, one thing that we want to keep in mind is our, our focus should not be on the signs of the end time. Our focus should be on Christ. And if we keep our focus on him, then all these things that are happening and things that are going to happen won't cause us to waver in our faith. Um, when we put our guard down or when we start to focus on the wrong things, what we're actually doing is taking our focus off of God and putting it on ourselves. 
and that allows sin to come into our own hearts. And so I just encourage you, stay focused, and I'll probably say that all night tonight because that's where we are. We have to stay focused on what's important, stay focused on Christ and not on the things that's going on around us because his word promises he'll never leave us or forsake us. He's got us in the palm of our hand. Will we have trials and tribulations? Yes, but he's got us in the palm of his hand. Yeah, I think that just reiterate what Pastor Bethany said um, is you know, we, you hear all the time about the end times and uh, whether it's, it's close or not. And I think, you know, the Bible specifically says, just be ready. And uh, I think as Christians, as, as a country, as a, as a world, man, and now is the time to essentially be ready because, uh, you know, there, there's so much things that are going on. And I think it's, it's if we live our lives in a certain way that we are ready, you know, in a constant state of readiness, uh, then you don't have to fear anything, uh, you know, what the world has or, you know, what, what's going on and, um, even just uh, ensuring in our own lives, our own families, and the people that we're around are also ready as well. Um, you know, when that time comes, and just be in that state of readiness. And sometimes it's, you can be a little stressful. Uh, you're like, all right, am I doing enough? Or is this what God wants me to do? But just, you know, stay diligent in what we're doing. And, um, you know, the, what, the, what the word says, just be, you know, be, just be ready. You know, they've been, we've been saying that for, you know, since you know, my dad was in the, you know, in the 70s and 60s there, you know, but just stay in that constant state of readiness and uh, be in the word and be in what God wants us to do. You know, I uh, looked this morning at the Courier Press and the obituaries, and when I went through that, uh, there was multiple ages. There was not one set age that is your time to go, and when it's, it's our time, it's our time, and so... Uh, uh, whether he's coming back tomorrow or not, I don't know. But I know when he's ready, we're going. And uh, we're not assured to make the rapture. Uh, so be on guard, I think, is, is, is what we're hearing. So uh, let's just uh, uh, encourage folks to get ready because, you know, if he's not coming back, he's, he's, he's getting ready to do something big. And, and I'm ready for that too. All right? Let's... Uh, Let's look at another question here. Is the, is the virus from God? With that train of thought, how can a loving God allow a virus that causes so many to be sick, so many to die, and causes so much financial difficulties to happen? Uh, is the virus from God? A sounding no from our <laughs> panel. Uh, okay. How can God allow this to happen then? Um, well, no, the, the virus is definitely not from God. And, and, of course, the Bible teaches that, that we do have authority over the enemy. And that's something just to remember, too, that uh, we do have a real enemy in the world. And uh, we fight against principalities of powers and darkness and so Satan and the fallen angels are definitely enemies. They, they, uh, their their um, <laughs> mission is to kill, steal, and destroy. So, but, you know, I was thinking that in the word, God says twice in the New Testament, it's not his will that any should perish. And so sometimes God will allow this to happen uh, just to awaken people up to to let them know hey there is an eternity just like you said pastor people die in and so we're here on this earth to determine where are we going to spend eternity mm -hmm. and there is a real heaven and there is a real hell and um so i think that um, th though the virus is not from god he's a loving god i think that god loves everyone he loves he loves us so much that he sent his only begotten son yeah to die for our sins. That's how much he loves us. I mean, the love that he has for us is incredible. But he also needs to show people that we, we need to repent and get right with God. There's a lot of people that don't know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. They don't know the good news of the gospel. Right. And so um, one of the things that I've noticed, uh, even in some of the uh, members of my family, when this first started, 
it shook them to the core. And yes. and one of the first things they says, we 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 got to make sure that we're right. That's right. With God, yes. and so it see. By allowing this to happen, mm-hmm. even though it didn't come from God, it is speaking to the hearts of the people that's that are right. not right, right with God. Mm-hmm. And so that's one of the things that I've noticed, just like with 9-11, what did it do? It filled the churches up. When, it, when a tragedy happened, was that God's will for, for those lives to, you know, I don't believe so. Like I said, we, we, um, we don't fight against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and darkness in this world. But so... God loves us, and, and he, he gave his son to redeem us, and, and, the, and the, the world continues to reject him and reject his love, reject Jesus. So I believe that God allows these things to happen, and, and we have. We've pushed God out. Uh, we've, we've turned him aside, pushed him out, and so sometimes, you know, he'll just remove that hand of blessing and say, well, if you really think that you can do it on your own, let's just see how well that works for you. Yeah, yeah. Very good. Exodus 23 says, you shall have no other gods before me. God must be number one. And I think God just finally got his belly full, if if you'll accept that phrase, and just let the virus come upon us, just like he let the virus come upon the plagues in Egypt. Mm -hmm. And he's trying to tell us that without him, we can do turn from our wicked ways and serve him in spirit and in truth but we have so far uh, turned ourselves so far away from God in the world and in the United States it's time that something like this happens to wake us up and return us to our Lord and Savior you know the the sufferings of war, violence, famine, COVID-19, homelessness, racial inequality, um, all the forms of social and economic injustices are a result of humanity being in power. Yeah. Um, we live in a fallen world. Um, you know, and we fault God for everything, for not doing something. You know, why, God, why don't you do something? Um, God did do something. He sent his son to die on a cross. And bring the ultimate answer, um, and so um, you know his answer is the only answer that works. Um, the way the world system works, the way we do power, and um, it only leads to chaos. Um, violence begets violence. Um, the solution is the way of love, and that's what Jesus came to tell us. So. Yeah. Yeah, one of the things uh, uh, that I was looking up or just reading about, and uh, we talk about, uh, you know, if there is or there is never any, you know, uh, pandemics or, or anything like that, then it really wouldn't, you know, Jesus, God lets us live in a free, you know, free defiance. Uh, you know, he wants us to do what is right, but we have control of our lives. And, and if we were to ask God every time there was something bad happen, it wouldn't really be, we wouldn't really be free anymore. God wants us to freely follow after him even in the tough times, and that's where that love comes out. You know, God loves us, but we have to, if we never really had any tr- struggles or trials, we wouldn't really know what love is or what grace is. Uh, and I think, you know, even in times of uh, uncertainty and, you know, you talk about wars and famines and, you know, pandemics and, uh, you know, 9-11 and different things and why bad things happen is, I think, is part of it showing, you know, how we really truly love uh, and how we show love to other people and uh, the love that Christ shows us on a daily basis and you know if we uh, choose to have those uh, that same love that Christ gives us then you know we don't have to fear those things uh, obviously um, because we know the end result you know we know where we end up you know we don't fear uh, death you know we we mourn death but we don't fear it um, because we ultimately know the end uh, the outcome there so I think um, you know we we have that free choice and God's going to let, let things happen the way they do. And, you know, we can trust in him that he's going to take care of us uh, in, the, in, in any time, in every situation. But he's going to let things, you know, fall where they go because, you know, sin into the world. And uh, we have those recovery every day. Yeah. You know, we deal with it every day. So, I'm reminded about the story in John about the blind man and the disciples asked Jesus, is he blind because of his own sin or because of his parents' sin? 
And Jesus' answer was no, it was just so that the power of God can be shown. And so a lot of times bad things happen so that something powerful can be shown so that you can realize who God, God really is God, <laughs> and he really is in control. But um, I wanted to remind you also of Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not disaster, to give you a future and a hope. We have to stand on God's word. We've got to hold fast to that. And I'll go back to what uh, Miss Linda said about how people's hearts are. This is a, a, a spiritual awakening for the whole world, not just Evansville, the whole world. And the hearts are opening and people are realizing there is a God and there is a hell, there is a devil. And I just, I encourage you to use this time to reach out and to share about Jesus because uh, those that would shut the door in your face before, they may not anymore. They may open that door wide open to you to hear some good news about Jesus. You know, I'm reminded that... Uh the word plainly says God won't put more on us than we can handle, and he's always going to provide a way of escape. Uh, I know this. He's in control, and he says I have a plan. And uh, I'm just one of those guys that thinks good comes from God and bad comes from the enemy. And you're not going to change my mind on that. So, uh, uh, you know, that's, that's how I roll. Uh, God's, God's got this thing. I think he's going to turn around. And he's going to be glorified from it, and I think uh, I think great things are coming ahead. Amen. Amen. Should Christians, the church, submit to government restrictions and guidance, even if they disagree? I'll start. If okay. That's all right. Yes. I'm reminded in Mark twelve fifteen, they asked Jesus, "Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar?" Yeah trying not trying to put jesus in the horns of a dilemma and so he says well show me a coin right mm -hmm. and he said well whose picture's on that coin mm -hmm. caesar he said render to caesar's the things that are caesar's and render to god the things that are god and god expects us to obey the law of the country unless it disagrees with the commands of god yeah. and now the fact that we've uh they've said you know not to get together because the virus is contagious we have to be concerned for the people. We have to. And if the government says, now you cannot preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, then that's where you draw the line. Right. That's right. Different. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So we obey the law of the land unless it disagrees with the proclamation of the gospel or the living yeah. Christian Amen. life. Right. Yeah. I like that. Go ahead. Well, um, in Romans 13... Everyone must submit to governing authorities, for all authority comes from God, and those in positions of authority have been placed there by God. So anyone who rebels against authority is rebelling against what God has instituted, and they will be punished. Yeah. That's the word of God. Yeah. Um, in 1 Peter two thirteen to 17 um, it talks about the same thing. It says, in order to honor the Lord, you must respect and defer to the authority of every human institution, whether it be the highest ruler, the president, or the government, or the governors that he puts in place to establish, to punish lawbreakers and to praise those who do what is right. For it is God's will for you to silence the ignorance of foolish people by doing what is right. And so I, I just, I thought it was, I think it's interesting that we all have uh -huh. a different, different scripture. scriptures. Yeah. <laughs> No, yeah, I, I think this is what I had too, and uh, just to reiterate, um, I think uh, we all th have different uh, uh, theories, our thinks, our uh, thinkings, uh, thinking about uh, how we should be, you know, coming back to church and and how and they can't take us out. I mean, I think we've said it all along: is you know, we've never stopped having church. God's never right. stopped Amen. moving in our church. Amen. I mean, that's the big thing. And until uh, if the government were to say you can't preach the gospel then that's where you have the problem. They're like, you know what, the, you know, we don't live in uh, China or Saudi Arabia or anywhere where they oppress Christianity. If those were the cases, then, you know, if preaching the gospel were to uh, be prohibited, then that's where, um, 
you know, defiance comes in and, you know, being able to preach the gospel to people. That's where I think uh, those, that line is not moved there yet. Uh, but, you know, I think there will come a time when that will take place, but we're not there yet. And uh, I think, you know, submitting to authority and, uh, you know, whether it's uh, Pastor Jeff's authority, uh, uh, our district, you know, our superintendents or, you know, the Assemblies of God districts, you know, su- submitting to those authorities as well, uh, those godly men that we should, you know, abide by those things until uh, we get otherwise. So That coming from our youth pastor. Hey. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> you know, uh, I think Linda and TJ hit on a good point. Uh, they haven't told me I could not preach the gospel and uh, they're going to have a problem when they do that one if they try Uh, but when it comes to protecting people he calls us shepherds and uh, there's a lot of difference between a shepherd and a hireling and uh, you know the government has has put forth things to protect us and uh, we're going to have to do our best to try to to adhere to those things and I think the scripture says if we don't we are in trouble and so uh, I think great points I love that we have all different scriptures that say we're right on and uh, it's good when God confirms things in a time like this how can we have power over fear and, and anxiety stay strong and keep the faith you know uh, from the beginning uh, people have, God's people, have been afraid, uh, all different levels. And now with everything else added on, uh, how do we stay strong? How do we overcome fear? Uh, how do we beat anxiety? Go well, ahead, Linda. There's the number one commandment in the Bible that's repeated 366 times and once for every day, and including the leap year, and it is, Jesus said, stop being afraid. Um, I mean, pretty much so many pages that you turn on there, and he says that over and over again. And so no matter what goes on, no matter what the situation is, uh, when you belong to Jesus Christ, you can say, though I walk through the valley of the deepest darkness, I will not fear the evil one because you are with me. Just think about that for a minute. The, the God of the universe that created a billion times billion stars, that the angels, the heaven, and the earth, and everyone in it is with you. And he says, I Hallelujah. will never leave you nor forsake Amen. you. And so I think sometimes we have to remind ourselves of that because he has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and power and a sound mind. Uh, Isaiah 43, 1 through 3, he said, fear not. For I have redeemed you, and I have called you by your name. And when you walk through the waters, I will be with you. And when you go through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. And when you pass through the fire, you will not be burned, nor will the flames kindle upon you. He told us there is going to be water, there's going to be fire, there's going to be difficulties. But he says, but I will be with you in the midst of the storm. And so God is able to take care of us. He's able to um, take us by the hand and take us through us. And uh, he just said, I will not, no, never, ever leave you. I just won't do it. And so there's a great comfort in that. Sometimes we just have to encourage ourselves when fear tries to overtake us. And you see, and and panic wants to come in and and strike at you. Um, You know, we have to find ways to encourage ourselves. And I know for Jerry, he, he loves music, just loves music. And so... Gospel music is very important to him, and that's such a, 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 there's so many ways that we can uplift ourselves to prevent from fear from coming in and and overtaking us. The coronavirus is very scary because it puts, it puts ourselves in touch with our own morality. Mm -hmm. But if we know Jesus as Savior, then we have nothing to fear. Through this virus, God is calling us to himself. He is asking us to return to God where there is peace and safety and where our needs and, and will be met. God will allow escalations and trial of all things, but he will always protect those 
that serve and love him. We need, we need for people of the world and the United States to surrender to Jesus and find salvation. Um, you know, um, we just have to guard our hearts. You know, there's a lot of voices speaking out there. Um, and sometimes we, because we live in such a noisy, we live in a noisy world and there's a lot, everybody's got an opinion about everything. Um, and so we have to, to go to the ultimate opinion, the word of God. And we've got to build our spirits up with the word of God. Um, Let's see. So, you know, fear is a battle of the mind, and you don't combat thoughts with thoughts. You combat thoughts with words. And so you've got to find the promises of God and stand on them. Yeah. You know, um, God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. No weapon formed against me shall prosper, and every tongue that rises up against me in judgment um, is condemned. Fear has no dominion over me. Because the greater one lives in me. Mm -hmm. He has given me victory in every area of life. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Um, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. You know, the peace of God passes all understanding. He, and it guards my heart and mind um, through Christ Jesus. Um, so we, we just got to find our promises in the word of God. When... Um, fear comes around us and, you know, you only have to listen to 30 seconds of, of the news right. and they're, they're yelling about, I mean, just how bad things are. And, and I know they're bad, but we have greater truth. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, God lives in us um, and he is our strong tower and he is our refuge. And we need to build ourselves up on the promises of God. Um, because we live in a noisy world, because we have voices coming at us from all directions, and we have to know who we are yeah. in the Lord um, to make it in times like these. Yeah, I love what you know, Linda was saying about Jerry as far as music, and I think that's, you know, as Christians, and you have that, that, that go to, that turn to, you know, scripture, and uh, you know, most songs that we listen to are based off of what scripture says, and it's a powerful tool that we have when fear and anxiety comes at us. And, you know, not with just you now pandemic or, you know, situations of uh, cancer or, you know, different things are going on. And we always return to, you know, the, the promises that God has for us. And, you know, we all go through different things. And, uh, you know, that God allows us to go through things. So we have to go back to him to trust yes. in him more. And, man, because if we could do it on our own, like, oh, I'm not going to get sick, then we don't need God's love or God's power to, over us or whatever. Nothing ever as bad is going to happen. But not having that fear of, uh, you know, even on the other side of, you know, I have to uh, always, you know, uh, you know, people, you know, lock their doors and security systems and cameras. And all that's good and stuff, but, you know, living in a constant state of fear that something bad is going to happen to them. Um, and, you know, that's not where Christ wants us to live either. And, you know, it goes back to... Um, you know, some people die, you know, get sick, and why do those things happen? And again, it goes back to, I think, where um, we as Christians, man, bad things are going to happen, and we can be mournful of those things, and uh, we can have fear, but we ultimately know where we're going to end up. And I, heaven is going to be an amazing thing, and uh, I don't have to live in fear of, of death or live in fear of, you know, getting sick or losing a loved one because I know, you know, where they're going to end up. And I, man, I don't, want to live on this earth for forever. You know, I want to, yeah. I want to go to heaven as, uh, eventually. And uh, after I, um, I think a lot of as Christians, we live in that, in that area of fear of, um, and nobody's going to take my life. And I'm like, well, if that's my time to go, man, that's, I'm going to go live with Jesus then. I'm, I'm out, right. you know, uh, no DNR on me, you know, anything. Um, uh, and so I think we, as a Christian, man, we have to get to that place of, man, it's not going to be, it's not about me. It's about what I can do while I'm here. And, uh, you know, that fear that we get. And um, real quick, we'll share this with Ty being born. And he had, you know, 10% chance to live. And, and we were given a word uh, from a prophetic lady in California that said, man, your son's going to have an amazing testimony. And because of those words that were spoken over her while he was still in her womb, man, we stood on that word. And even while that fear and anxiety of not knowing what's going to happen and transfer to two different hospitals and, you know, all these things that we stood on those things, those promises that God gave us, 
Um, we didn't have to live in a fear. And if we go back a year later and the doctor's like, you didn't realize how close your son was to dying. You kept, you know, going in and out. And they're like, you needed to be there. And we, they couldn't understand the, uh, the level of peace that we had um, and not being in fearful of the, of the unknown. And God is going to be in those control situations and, and everything. And, uh, and it's just being in God's word and, you know, listening to whatever Christian music that you can get your hands on, whether gospel or whatever. Um, and uh, being just trusted in God. That's so true. I was going to say, what are we afraid of? Dying? <laughs> Is that a bad thing? I mean, no. I think it's more like you said, it's more of a fear of the unknown. We don't know, but it's not our job to know. It's his job, and he does know. Um, I was reading in um, Deuteronomy, and it was a, a, a to a king telling them that you have to read God's word regularly to prevent you from becoming proud and acting like you're above everybody else and prevent you from turning away from the commands in the smallest way. So back again to we have to stay focused. If our focus is in the right place, um, in Proverbs 1, but all who listen to me will live in peace and uncontrolled by fear. Are we living in Christ? Put our hope and our trust fully in Christ. He has the answers. He does know what's going on. It's not unknown to him. And he's my father. That's my Abba daddy. And he cares more for me than any person on this earth. And he's going to take care of me, whether here on earth or taking me home. I shall not fear. How many scriptures in the Bible do we have to lean on? And we sing a song here, um, Psalms 46, Lord of hosts. And I just love that song. And it just you know, re reiterates how that God is with us. He's our shelter. He's our rock. And he's going to be there with us through the thick and the thin. And that's God's word. You know, Anything we go through, if there's somebody to go through it with us, makes it easier. Yeah. And uh, Isaiah 41 says, fear not, yeah. I am with you. And so, uh, you know, yeah. there's nothing my God can't handle. And if we can just relax and give it back to him and yeah. let him take care of it, he's going to be our strength. Right. Uh, he's going to get us through it. He's God. He can do whatever he wants to do. Uh, we're good. Yeah. Amen. I, I keep thinking about um, uh, cast your cares yes. on him. Yes. Yeah. So we have to be expert at casting our cares on him. And that cast means to throw like a baseball. You know, you throw it hard and fast and immediately. Yes. You know, you don't carry that around. And he's the burden barrier. Mm -hmm. He wants to carry the burden. He doesn't sleep. I need to sleep. So yeah. I'm going to hand it to him. And I know that's easier said than done, yeah. you know. Yes. Yeah. When yes. everything's going well, it's all easy to say all this, you know. Right. But, that's, but it's a practice that we need to do that because, like you said, Bethany, he is our Abba Father yes. mm. who loves us more than we can even imagine. Very good. And, you know, you think about how you love your children, right? Mm. You give your life for them. Mm. Just think how much more mm. our Heavenly Father loves us. Amen. And so we can come to him come boldly to the throne of grace and and give him our petitions and he's not going to rebuke you for it you can come just as you are and cast your cares on him and uh he's going to see you through he's he's able he's more than able he's a miracle working god Amen. and he's more than able to take care of us and don't you think that it's really pride yeah. on our part to think that we have to figure it out and it has to be all on us and that we can't cast it on him because if we're not in control, if we haven't figured it out, how's it going to work out right? Isn't that really just pride on our part to not trust him? That's good because I, I think with this coronavirus, it's, it's proven a point that we can't we can't do this on yeah. our own. <laughs> it's yeah. kind of destroyed the whole yeah. pride thing, you know. Right on. So uh, we're good. God's with us, and, and uh, I'm not afraid. Decisions that we make are not a fear, that's and uh, uh, that's an exciting place to be. Uh, do we have authority over the enemy? Do we have authority over the virus? How can God's people be affected by the virus 
or infected by the virus and even die. Linda, we just love starting with you, so we'll just go right there. Well, first of all, we absolutely have authority to rebuke the devil. Luke 10, 19 says, see, I have given you authority over all the power of the enemy. What's the difference between authority and power? You think about an 18-wheeler. My father was a, a, a truck driver, and so he drove these 18-wheelers, and when he came down the street, it rattled our windows, you know? I mean, especially if you're on the highway or whatever and your house is nearby, it would rattle the window. That's, that's power. Yeah. But authority, if someone has a badge, yeah. and they show that badge and put your hand, that, that truck comes to that power. All that power comes to a stop. And so I think we have to understand the power of God and his spirit dwells in us, his spirit, his Holy Spirit. And so um, we do have power over all of the enemy. Um, and I think that we will see a lot of miracles. I think that as, as there's a lot of things going on right now, I, I believe that God's miracle working power is going to show up in a great way as well. But, um, and I think it's common sense to use wipes and masks, what we have been doing, and, and, and appreciate you guys leading so much as an example to that, to the congregation, so that they would just know to follow and do that as well, and for good reasons. And so common sense needs to be embraced. But some, I've heard some saying, well, if we have any precaution, if we do any kind of precaution, that, that's an act of fear. And I, I think that's silly. I, yeah. I really do. I think yeah. that's silly. Uh, we don't play with a rattlesnake and call that faith now, do we? <laughs> I, mean, I don't. You know, I mean, someone play with a rattlesnake. That's not for me. But anyway, uh, and I just want to say this too: that don't don't make don't make anybody feel ashamed or guilty if they're struggling with fear. You know, the thing of it is, is that we've had families throughout the world that have lost loved ones and, and, and several family members through this corona. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it's very real. And we've had many people in the world that have suffered tremendous health issues. And so that battle might be a little bit more of a battle for them than yeah. for others. Mm -hmm. And so I say, don't, don't, let, don't make them feel guilty for that, just just hand them a lifeline. Just just hand them a, yeah. uh, some hope. Yeah. Some hope. That's good. 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 Yeah, I think um, you know what what Linda was saying is is right on, and you know we have uh, we have authority over that, and again, we're not going to live in fear over it, and we're going to take call what Christ has called us out, what we can call out. Yet, we're, you know, we're not going to play with rattlesnakes. I don't, I don't play with dynamite, even though it sounds like fun. And uh, um, I would like to, but my wife won't let me out of, out of uh, you know, those things that we, you know, I don't just go do things. We don't speed 100 miles an hour, although you'd like to. Um, uh, it's, it's fun, but you don't do it. Um, and I think out of the respect for other things that are going on. And, uh, you know, we have authority over, you know, again, I don't go back to fear and but you're not going to, you know, have wisdom. You know, God gave us wisdom to do things properly. Um, you know, we, uh, that wisdom God calls us to have. And, you know, we, uh, we, we pray for our sicknesses, yet we still might go to the hospital. You know, God's not, like, you can't go to the doctor um, and call out, uh, man, I'm sick, but I'm never going to go to the doctor. Um, but God calls us to have wisdom. And I think that's where, you know, we call those things out. We, we, we pray and we trust God to do those things. And, you know, we still don't stop praying. And we don't stop right. trusting in God, even though things don't always, we don't always get the answers that we look for, um, you know, even right away. But we don't stop praying. And I think that's the cool thing with, with, uh, with things that happen in our lives where um, bad things happen and it brings us closer. So we pray more. Uh, you know, we, and then we get to talk with God and those things and we get to, you know, we think about how powerful prayer is. We get to actually talk with our heavenly father and be like, man, God, these are what I'm going through at this time. And this is the things that I'm dealing with. And it brings us closer. Um, even though we don't always get the answers that we want, we don't always get the, the results that we want. And, uh, um, but you know, there's evil in the world and God's given us wisdom to, to believe and trust in him. I think that's where we need to be at. Amen. Um, just uh, back in Matthew 10, um, where Jesus 
gave the disciples um, power and authority to over unclean spirits to drive them out and to cure all kinds of diseases and all kinds of weakness and infirmity. Um, you know, authority has been given to the believer. Um, it's important to understand that, yeah, the devil has power because he's the God of this world. Um, but we have power and authority through Christ. And we just have to walk in the authority that we have in the word. Um, our enemy only has the authority that we give him. And we give him far too much. Yes, we do. Um, you know, many times, you know, we just give him the ability to attack us through our ignorance. Just because we're just not paying attention or whatever. Um, you know, we need to be proactive. And we need to resist the devil immediately. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, it says, submit to God, resist the enemy, and he will flee. Amen. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes we just, we don't resist. We just let him yeah. bulldoze uh -huh. right over top of us. <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm. First Peter 5, 9 says, uh, to withstand him, to be firm in the faith against his ons onset, rooted, established, strong, immovable, and determined, mm -hmm. um, knowing that the same identical sufferings are appointed to your brotherhood, the whole body of Christians throughout the world. That's the amplified translation. Um, we have to resist him at the onset mm -hmm. because if he... You know, if, if you give him an inch, he'll take a mile. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so we just have to be firm in the faith, right. and we just have to know who we are in Christ. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Jesus said just before that he ascended that, that we should have greater power than the, he did. So we have the authority and the power. But where do we get this? How do we activate it? Well, the authority comes from the inscrutable Word of God. Mm -hmm. We must return to the Word of God. Amen. We must believe it. We must receive it. And we must exercise the Word. And when we do that, we develop faith. And through faith, faith we become victorious. And I'm going to tell you what. I think God is trying to tell those who are weak in faith, to return to me and be strong in faith. He is telling those who lack faith to find faith, and we need to trust in God uh, because it is he, in he, that we have our hope, our peace, and our joy, and our healing, and our deliverance. I have to think about the disciples when Jesus was with them, and they would come to him and well I can't do this I can't it's like frustration you could tell through the word of God Jesus was like how long must I be with you how many times I got to bail you out and I'm sure that we're in that same boat um, we have authority we, if we read the word we have authority but like Claire was saying we don't take it and we do allow so much more on us than what has to, but on the other hand, like TJ was saying, we are allowed to go through things. Um, I had in my notes about uh, Paul earlier, how that he was had an affliction, and he had asked God several times to take it away from him, and he didn't. Our ways are not his ways. Our thoughts are not his thoughts, and God has a plan, and we just have to trust him. You know, uh, sometimes you got to read the rest of the story, and uh, we like to get a verse in the Bible and and just stand by it. But uh, Luke nine one says, they called the twelve disciples together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure all diseases." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But verse two says, "Then he sent them to preach to the king, preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick." Uh, he just didn't, didn't give us authority. So that we could have authority and we could be puffed. Yeah. He said, yeah. there's a world out there that needs you, yes. and you have the authority. If you'll use it, I'll let you. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think, uh, I think this is a wake-up call to us. Yes. Uh, I know our time's running short, and I'm going to jump ahead of a couple questions uh, and uh, uh, get a good closer maybe. And I know this question, everybody, everybody wants to know, when is this going to be over? And uh, let me rephrase it so it makes more sense. What will, what will cause God to intervene and cause this virus to be gone? 
Jerry. It says one of my favorite verses, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and hear, heal their land. Amen. One of my favorite verses. And, you know, there's so much in there when you break it down. And we got to humble ourselves. There's people, I know right now there's opportunities for me at work that's never been there before. Because people are watching how I'm dealing with this whole thing. Um, I've had people tell me that I am looking at this virus as a, there's fear in my heart. But it's not fear. When you have health issues, you have to be smart. It's beyond fear. It's um, because I know, as, as we talked already, that when when it's my time to go home then this world means nothing to me because this is why I live here to someday see Jesus face to face because that's what it's all about and you know sometimes we just get in and I'm I'm one of the worst I can tell you that I just get in my daily mode of doing what I need to do and sometimes I don't pray as much as I should. Sometimes I don't get in his word nowhere near what I should. But if we humble ourselves and pray and seek his face, seek his face. And I really believe that God will heal our land. And I think he's put people in place for this to happen. Um, and they are humans. I know we like to pick people apart when they're in front of everybody and it's easy to find their faults when they're up front and in front of the world. But they are humans. But I really feel God has put people in place to heal our land. But we humble ourselves, seek his face, and turn from our wicked ways. He will heal our land. When you said that, it reminded me of, first of all, this is a prayer for the church. It says, if my people, yes. my people. Yes. So this isn't a prayer. This isn't speaking to the world. This is our responsibility. We want to judge the White House, but we don't want to judge our house, see? And so it says, it starts with us. Yeah. If you want revival, if you want to move of God, if you want to see God do miraculous things, he gave us a formula right here. And... Sometimes I think we, you know, so we got to, we got to, we got to seek his face. And I think one of the tools of the enemy is to keep us so busy. It's a distraction. It's a, it's a distraction. And before I retired, I, I, my plate was so, so full. And in my job, it was so full. I just thought I, I can't breathe. <laughs> and I just came home. And I said, I can't do this anymore. I need to retire. I just... And, and part of that is because my heart broke because I would come home and I would feel like I was just giving God my leftover. And we have to fight the distraction and, and make the time, God, you mean so much to me. I, I want to seek you. I want to grow in you. I want to know you. I want to hear your secrets. And because I can't do anything about yesterday. I can't do anything. I can only do what today's a new day, and his mercies are new every day. So, you know, just striving at that and, and to do that. And so it's been quite freeing for myself to do that. And I, and I really have a heart for those that work and, and, you know, are caught up in this busyness. And, and a lot of times it's not our fault. I mean, you do what your boss tells you to do, <laughs> you know, and, and that's... <laughs> It means working 60 hours a week. By golly, you will work 60 hours a week and take that phone with you <laughs> and answer it at midnight. <laughs> but I think we get the picture here. It will be over when God says it's over. Uh, God wants to accomplish his purpose through this virus. And I think his purpose is to 
turn the hearts of the Christian people around. It seems like, like you said, their plates are so full, they have to put things on the back burner and God is the one that's put on the back burner. And God says for us to worship him with all of our heart, our mind and our souls. And so I think when the church realizes where their power and authority is and turn around, then God will see. And it is, and it also, God wants to bring the rejectors to faith. He wants those people to look at us and see Christ in us. And through Christ in us, he wants these people to come to Christ. And the, the coronavirus, you know, notice how it spreads quickly and quickly and quickly to, from person to person. Well, this is a foreshadowing of the, God, of the way God will pronounce judgment in Revelation. He will pronounce judgment in Revelation. So we need to be ready. And when we turn our hearts to God, and we return to where we should be, then God said, enough is enough, and it will be over. Yeah, I think um, we, we try to make sense of everything that's going on, and you know, the Bible clearly states, uh, you know, it's gonna get worse and worse. And one of the scriptures that I learned when I was younger is Luke 23, 31, it says, if people would do these things when the tree is green, meaning when Jesus was around, what will they do when it's dry? And it is, it is dry out there. And you know, the, what's going on with, uh, with students and teenagers and the internet and all the things that are accessed with uh, you know, drugs and alcohol, everything is such a readily available thing and everything is put on, it's okay. It's just a little bit. It's not going to hurt anybody or whatever. Um, you know, uh, homosexuality, uh, you know, it's, uh, we need to love and uh, it's accept. And, but it's, you know, everything has gone to the, to the extreme of, oh, we just need to accept uh, the sin that they have. And, and uh, you know, there's a certain necessity of loving things or loving people. But, um, man, there's, there's got to be that repentance. And um, it's only going to get worse. You know, the devil is going to uh, take advantage of all those little things that we, um, that we try to slip up on. And he's going to put a foothold on those things. And, um, you know, one of the things that we've been trying to get these students to, to understand, too, is if, if we couldn't pray and read our Bible in these last, you know, 60, 80 days when we're kind of slow... Uh, what's going to happen when we're, we're going to get real busy? You know, it gets back into our lives and we get back into uh, the normalcy. And, uh, man, I, I couldn't pray then and I can't pray now. I can't read my Bible right now because I'm, I'm too busy. And, you know, we get dry. And that's when the devil takes that foothold and distractions come and things come out. And, you know, we, uh, we slip up and uh, we fall. And, you know, God wants us to stay ready and to be ready and stay, uh, stay green and stay in his word. And I think... Um, you know, you know, we look back at when we'll be gone. It's it's when we're ready. That's when it's going to be gone. When we're, when the church takes the stand and, and uh, as a church family, as a church body that we're going to be ready. We're, you know, are we ready to handle what God is going to do yet? I don't know yet. We're still figuring that out. So to wrap this up, if I understood all you right, we have the authority you proved it by the word of God over the enemy and over the virus. We took it a step farther, and he gave us the formula. And I think Brother Jerry said it just right. Uh, there's a lot more to the formula than we, we, we want to, to believe. It says, uh, my people, that's got to be the church, the Christian, uh, call upon my name, look to him, Humble themselves, you know. Uh, seek his face. Wow. Turn from our wicked ways. He's telling the church, you know, uh, hear from heaven. Then I can forgive you and I can heal your land. So, you know, this virus is just one portion of our country needing healing. Uh, with everything going on, it's obvious that uh, our country's in a mess right now and really needs God. Yes. And uh, so tonight, this panel encourages you 
to take the authority that God has given us and to humble ourselves and pray. You know, it's time to fast. It's time to go deeper than you've ever been. It's time to hear from God. Yes. You know, God predicted that this was going to happen to this church in a prophecy here. And, and he reconfirmed it several times. And if I remember correctly, he said, keep your eyes focused on me and trust me and it's going to be okay. And so, you know, uh, our country needs us now. Uh, God forewarned us, uh, let's get ready, okay? Uh, Pastor TJ, would you close us in prayer? Lord, I thank you for this opportunity to come and to, to discuss and to uh, share scripture and share what you've laid on our hearts to, to get through to the, our church and to people in this, uh, this country. Lord, I just pray you would uh, guide and direct us in everything that we do, Lord, that we wouldn't live in fear. Uh, we wouldn't have anxiety, but we would trust and put our, our faith and our wisdom into you. And Lord, in the difficult times, Lord, that we would come to you and, uh, and, uh, and put our fears and our failures on your feet, Lord, that you would uh, carry us. And it wouldn't be our own works, but our trust in you. Lord, as, as a Christians, as a, our church uh, specifically, Lord, that you would humble us. Lord, bring us to what we need to be, uh, to be witnesses uh, in our city, in our communities, in, in this country. Lord, uh, be with us and guide us and direct us in everything that we do. Lord, not us, our own things, our own wills, our own desires, but what you would have us to do, Lord. Uh, we give you thanks and, and we praise you for everything that you do for us and keeping us uh, in this church safe. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you all for coming out. Thank you all for watching.